everybody and welcome back once again to the warren files uh i'm going to apologize up front for my voice i've uh we've not been feeling good around here so i my head feels like it's being compressed <laughs> um but but i was not going to not do tonight's show because i was a couple weeks ago we watched a movie called deliver us from evil and um i thought it was brand new and it was about this it was about our guest and I was like, man, we got it. I should try and get this guy on the show. And um, then I found out later first, the first message I sent him, Joe, and I don't think I told you this. I autocorrect spelled his name wrong. No. Yeah. And so his reply back to me was, you weren't even close on how you spelled my name. And I thought, oh, <laughs> shoot, man, I totally bombed this. We're not going to get him to come on and, you know, all this other stuff. But, but then I we talked. You, uh... I thought when you told him I was going to be on, he was going to refuse. No, I, I waited till I had him booked solid before I told him you were going to come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, you know, people want to hear him. They don't want to hear me. Uh, they probably want to hear you a little bit because everybody loves uh, Joe Frankie. Everybody's but, um, Joe Frankie. No, no. So he's a, he's an author of the book, Deliver Us From Evil. It was called Something Else when it first came out. Um, they obviously made a movie about him. He's a retired New York police sergeant. Um, and has also been a demonologist and has been in the work for years and years, as he calls it. Uh, so let's bring him on. His we'd like to introduce you all to Ralph Sarchi. Hey, Ralph, how you doing? Hey, Ralph, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, good, God. good. Yeah, like I said, when I saw that movie, I was like, I, I we got to try and get this guy on. And then, then you said, you know, one thing you said to me on the phone call was, you know, ah, forget the movie, just you know, get the book and read the book. And, yeah. and I did that and I'm glad I did because it is, the movie was good, but the book is way better and a lot different. So, you know, if people see the movie, don't, don't feel like you're getting the book experience because you're not. Um, and one of the things I was surprised about is how often you work with the Warrens. So why don't you, why don't you get into that a little bit, how you started working with the Warrens? if you would well from a young age i was an avid reader and i had an interest <clears throat> it started out basically at you in ufos and then i moved into more of the paranormal the ghost stories and over the years i kept reading about ed and lorraine so uh it, it was when my daughter uh was first born we had gone out my cat is jumping up on the table <laughs> that's all right <clears throat> my daughter's about a month old we uh we had gone to the you know to get clothes because the kid was growing at an immense rate so we stopped to a bookstore and uh <clears throat> it was actually my ex-wife came up to me and handed me hostage to the devil she said these it's about those people that you talk about because i used to talk about this stuff with her yeah so I brought mm -hmm. it home, I read it, and I decided it was time to call them. And the next day I got a listing. I, I called the house in Monroe, Connecticut, and uh, I spoke to Lorraine for about 45 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had asked her, I said, if uh, I, I remember Ed was in Newfoundland at the time. Okay. And, and I had asked her to send me more literature <laughs> if she had any. So she says, okay, give me your address. So I, I gave it to her. And she says, hold on, Ralph, wait one minute. There's something strange here. Now, that, that's not what I wanted to hear from coming from Lorraine, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm waiting. And she gets back on. She goes, take this man's number down and his address. He 
he works with us in New York. And, uh, you know, you might want to contact him. So I took the address down. It was two blocks away from where I was living. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I told Lorraine that. I said, Lorraine, you're not going to believe this, but that man just, he lives two blocks away from me. Um, actually on the same block my ex-wife used to live you mm -hmm. used to live on as a kid. So I, I got in touch with uh, Joe Forrester. That's that's who that uh, that man was. And I wrote about him in uh, Deliver yeah. Us From Evil. And, uh, you know, the concern was getting my daughter baptized. Like I yeah. said, she was only about a month old. And I had another two months to go before she was going to be baptized. Mm -hmm. And once she did that, you know, I was like a racehorse out of the starting mm -hmm. gate. I was always up in Connecticut and, you know, much to the displeasure of my ex, but, you know, yeah. I was a man on a mission and there wasn't going to be anybody or anything that was going to stop me from doing it. You know, mm -hmm. that's just the way it was, you know, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow anybody to uh, put a wedge in between it. And I still won't. Yeah. You know, I still won't allow that. Mm -hmm. I'll get rid of people before I let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, it is like, I mean, I don't, I haven't done the work that you have done to the extent that you have done it, but I know exactly what you're talking about it. I mean, helping people is helping people. And it's like, I don't want to say an addiction for me, but it's something I have to do. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why, but it's something I have to do. And so, you know, it's, it's easy. I, I know exactly what you're saying when, when you say people can't talk you out of doing it. Um, it's it always cracks me up too, and and I know it looked like Ken was watching, but it always I I've just heard a few random stories of people just calling up Lorraine, and she just answers the phone like, like she, she did, goes, yeah, she always answered the phone, yep, yeah, and that was before caller ID, and she didn't yeah. know it was on the phone, she yep, always and, the and, phone. you know a lot of times I was up there and that phone just kept ringing and yeah. the answer machine was going and going. <laughs> and going and there was just some times when she she knew who was on the phone but couldn't get to the phone yeah you know um yep. i remember one time uh lee lutz had called and lorraine said ralph get that and and take a message you know tell him that i can't get to the phone right now and i'll, I'll return the call so i picked up and i i spoke to him and i said lorraine's busy right now she'll call you back you know um yeah I got his number where he was at, and that was it. So, but that phone was always ringing. That was something. I had we had Thanksgiving up there with them one year. Um, mm -hmm. We were invited up. My youngest daughter wasn't even born yet. It was just me, my ex, and my oldest daughter. And uh, I mean, the phone wasn't ringing off the hook, but it was still ringing on Thanksgiving. Yeah, because you know, uh, we all ate in that kitchen area. You know, had a big table set up there. And, uh, you know, that phone was right on the wall. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of people that wanted to speak to them. Yeah. Yep. Imagine, you know, I, I can understand that. Um, was it similar with you? Because it sounds like you've done a boatload of cases. I mean, was your phone ringing all the time, too? Were you constantly yeah, I, getting inundated with phone calls? Yeah. When I first started, I had uh, my house number, you know. It was hooked up to my my family answering machine. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to go through that mm -hmm. sometimes, you know. Um, and then later on, I had a second phone line put in. So I just had it specifically in my office yeah. where I could just shut the ringer off and let the machine pick up if I don't want to deal with anything. Because there was some times that I just did, I did not want to deal with another case, you know. Yeah. And I would just be like, I'm done. That's it. I shut down. Yeah, um, I, I couldn't mm. do that 24 seven. I had to, I had to decompress from the amount of problems that I was dealing with, you know, people, other people's problems, mm -hmm. N not only the problem of being affected by the demonic, but the problem of mental illness, Yeah, you know, um, you can't just throw those people to the, to the side. You got to try to get them help somehow, you yep. know, and at the same time, you don't want to reaffirm the belief that their problem is stemming from the demonic. That is right. the greatest uh, disservice you could do to anybody who has a mental problem is right. to make them believe that it is the demonic. If it's not, because 
you're never going to be able to get rid of it. Yeah. Because it's not real. Yep. So um, you got to be real careful when you deal with that. So it could be draining at times. You yep. know? And that's um, why, you know, people people say to me sometimes, why do you get so upset about like a lot of these fake YouTube channels and things like that, you know, where everything's fake demon or, you know, the title is demon caught on tape, you know, all over YouTube. It's like, it's dangerous because, you know, people then believe that, that they're being haunted by something demonic when, when it's not. And like you said, it's very, very dangerous to deal with something as if it was demonic. If it's not, if it's a mental health issue, because like you said, then you come and do your thing and it doesn't go away, then they mm -hmm. feel like they're doomed, you know, and there's, you know, so that's, that's a, it's a very dangerous thing. Yeah, that's something. The problem is I'm not coming to do anything. You don't have that type of a problem. Right. So there would be no sense right. in me even doing anything and, and basically planting or cementing that seed in their mind that they mm -hmm. do have a demonic problem, which isn't going to go away. Yep. You know, um, and, and you don't want to do that. Yep. And you're perfectly right in your summation of people out there fooling around and not knowing what they're doing. It can mm -hmm. cause more damage and harm to people than help them. Even if they have the idea that they want to help people. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to you gotta know how to. Them. You're not going to help they, they don't have the experience. We run into that a lot, Ralph, with uh, these groups. Let's just call them ABC Paranormal. And they, they get in you know, they, they they get invited into someone's home who may believe they have a paranormal affliction or, or God forbid a demonic affliction. And they tell them, Oh yeah, you have a demon here, it's over our head, we can't help you. And then people like us who know what we're doing try to go in there and talk them back off the ledge and say, You don't have a demonic problem. Well, why did so and so tell me I have a demon here? So now you've got to try and, you know. <laughs> Pull them back off the ledge and explain to them that they may or may not have any kind of paranormal issue. It may be a psychological, you know, and we as a foundation, we have protocols for that. And we we ask the people to have a full uh, uh, psychological and, and physical workup, you know, um, and, and it's, it's, it's really it's really hard sometimes when they've had all these groups come in their house and they tell them there's a demon here. You know, we can't handle that. You need to call somebody else. And it's back, frustrating. It's very yeah. frustrating. Well, and, back, um, back in the day when I was working with the Warrens um, and even for a period of years after I, I had, um, you know, went out, gone out on my own, people, they, they were reluctant to get you involved. They, they didn't want anybody to know. Uh, their identity. They didn't want to be on TV. They didn't want to be in uh, mm -hmm. uh, news articles. Complete anonymity. Like yep. Listen, I got a problem here and I need you to come over here and tell me what the heck's going on because we don't know. And, um, you know, I can't get anybody in the church to help us out. They're telling us that we don't know what we're talking about. And, you know, I, I have physical attacks going on. I have things flying around the house. I, you know, I have my washing machine sliding across the room, you know, downstairs. Um, so I don't want my name being mentioned, you know, my identity. I don't want my neighbors knowing. So that's the way it used to be. Today, yeah. people are chomping at the bit to have anybody, anybody come into their house. Yep. As long as they got the cameras with them mm. and fool around with whatever's there. If, you know, if there's anything there at all. We've had people just lead, strange, strange lead. Stuff. we'd have, we'd have people lead sometimes with, you know, in their question, in their request for help, they say, you can go ahead and turn this into a movie or a book. It's that for me is a big sign right there that you probably really don't have an issue because you're just looking for, you know, to get famous. Yeah. And that's like, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I, you know, I got a call years ago. I'm not going to even mention the state of this man because it might give him away. I don't know what's happened to him, him, him and his family, but he had contacted me and he says, I have a problem in my house. Um, he used to be a politician, which right off the bat, that's one strike against me <laughs> not going to his house because yeah, I've watched your you channel. Know, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to deal with a lot of spirituality <laughs> and maybe that might be not something that I want to bite off. 
and chew on, you know, and deal mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. And then and then get in the middle between you and your demon. I, I'm very reluctant to do that. Mm. And I said to him, I says, what is it? What is it that you want from me? He says, well, I, I, I want to write a book. I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Mm-hmm. And I get off yeah. the phone. His his intention needed to be, well, I want it gone. Yeah. You know, um, yep. I don't want to. I don't want to play with it. I don't want to capture it on video. I don't mm. want to write a book. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I just want it to get out of here. I want yeah. it to leave. That's yeah. that's the attitude and the intention that I want um, uh, from a case. If I don't get that, I won't go. Uh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't charge money for what I do. So it's not like you're hiring me and now I am obligated yeah. to do something for you. Yep. Mm-hmm. I could tell you to go whistle Dixie if I don't like mm. what you're doing and walk away. That's it. You know, yep. it's a spiritual issue and it has to be done. It dealt with spiritually. And if your only exactly. intention is to write a book, yeah. then you got the wrong guy. I'm or get a Netflix special or be put yep. on Prime or something like that. Well, I mean, you know, when I started in the mid 80s and when you started, Ralph, um, we didn't have social media. We didn't have Internet back then so that i believe is is it obviously a huge yeah. contributor to all these problems sure definitely. and it, it drives me bananas as as an old schooler and like you said you know people's true intentions need to be looked if you want help and you can see it in their eyes if they really want help you can see that they're terrified and they don't know what's going on but we've had prospective clients say well i'm okay with it if you guys want to you know uh, write a book about this or mm-hmm. have a tv show and and right away we're like no 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 we're, that's not what we do and we we could see right through that so mm-hmm. i totally agree with you there well you know what happens a lot of times we get the call from the junior ghostbuster now you know <laughs> things are happening in the house and now all of a sudden they go out they get the uh you know the spirit boxes and the rem pods yep. and the you know, the Gauss meters and they're junior Ghostbusters now, you know, and they, you want to hear the EVPs I got? No, what I want you to do is I want you to stop doing that. Right. Yeah. And everything that you have, I want you to delete and I want you to get it out of the house. Now mm-hmm. tell me, are you baptized? Yeah. Tell me, do you go to church? Yeah. You know, those are the first questions I'm going to ask you. Mm-hmm. I want to know where you are spiritually. Yep. And if you're not interested in taking my advice in that area, then I have to uh, yeah. say, sorry, I can't help you. You know, you change your mind. Give me a call. Let me know. You know, mm-hmm. um, sometimes I hear back from them. Other times I don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, let's let's go back to the book and the movie again real quick. So obviously the movie was Hollywoodized. I guess if that's even a word, like they really took great liberties was, yeah. was the, was the, the entire portion of the attack that was on your family, or I mean that, that whole case in general with those three painters, was that all completely 100% made up or were parts yeah. of that true? Okay. Yeah. And my yeah. partner dying. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, that, it was, it, it was not originally called for, um, you know, for his character to die okay. it wasn't in the script and it was only later on that i found out that um scott felt that he had to he had to make uh that character die okay uh, for whatever reason you know that was in his right uh direct ahead yeah i was like yeah do whatever you got to do uh, yeah. you know at this yeah. point it really doesn't make a difference yeah you know um he already made me a murderer. So what the hell? Where were we gonna go from there? You know? Yep. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't gonna ask you that question because I figured if that was true, uh, we probably don't want to talk about it anyway. So it wouldn't have been in a freaking movie if it was right. true. I would have I would have choked Scott to death until yeah. he took it out of there. What are you kidding? Yep. But no, I never I never murdered anybody, you know. Um, that's I'm glad uh, to hear that. <laughs> not intentionally anyway, you know. Yep. Um, not anybody I, that didn't deserve it. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I'm a big fan of Wild Bill Hickok, and uh, mm-hmm. somebody had asked him about how he felt about the all the men that he killed, and his response was, "Some men need killing." 
And you know what? Yeah. He was 100% right. Yep. Some men need killing. Yep. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. You don't think Hitler needed killing? Yeah. You don't think Stalin or Mussolini needed killing or Pol Pot? <laughs> You know, they needed killing those men. Yeah. I think a lot of people today would be just, if we just talked to them nicer, it would all go away. <laughs> Maybe they just need a hug. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a you hugger. Can, you can talk <laughs> all you want. Right. I'll talk in the bar after, you know, when yeah. I'm like, holy shit, did you see that? You know, yeah. drinking, you know <laughs> that's when I'll talk. But <laughs> other than that, yep. you know, you can liberal your way right into the grave. It don't mean I got to follow you. you yeah. Know? Uh, who made another, you the grand poo bar of everybody's <laughs> behavior? You know, another another thing in the book that you that you pointed out that was uh that Ed Warren told you this is that the devil likes to operate in the shadow of the church. Yeah. What's what's that all about? That's that's a that was something I'd never heard before. That was very interesting to me. What? Yeah. Um. That uh, mm -hmm. large amount of cases usually happen where a, a, a religious institute is close by. I don't know what the reason for that phenomenon is, you know, okay. um, because when, when in relation to the demonic, they don't perceive this, this world, the natural order that God instituted the way we perceive it. Right. There are no borders for them. Mm -hmm. The only borders they have is what God allows them to do and what he doesn't allow them to do. Other than that, it's it's wide open. There are no building walls that are going to keep mm -hmm. them out. And that yeah. includes churches. You know, people think that, oh, you know, the devil can't go. Baloney. The devil knows scripture better than we know scripture. Yeah. Yep. He tempted Jesus Christ and the devil. Why wouldn't he not be able to go into a church? He, he tempted him three times in the desert and he attacked him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's not going to be a deterrent as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. Exorcisms were held in the church. You know, right. yep. well, we started in the church and then we mm -hmm. we eventually had to move around. You you would be surprised at where we actually held exorcisms. Mm. Is this... Mm -hmm. Because the church didn't want to really acknowledge that that stuff was going on or, I mean... It, no, 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 no. It had nothing to do with that. Okay. What it had okay. to do with is that, um, it, and I was actually just talking about this last night with Rob Morrow. Um, when, when Bishop McKenna performed an exorcism, it was done in uh, Our Lady of the Rosary Chapel in okay. Monroe, Connecticut. The problem was is that we... Uh, we always used the first pew because we needed to be able to have space to work around the, the person being exercised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right next to that area was a vent. And right underneath that vent was the preschool for the little oh. kids. And when we were up there during school hours, those oh, little no. kids were sometimes treated to things that they, they should not have heard, you know? Yeah. It wasn't thought of. A lot of times mm -hmm. we were done they were out in the play, the playground uh, uh, having class outside. They had the nuns yeah. had to get them out of the building because of the stuff that was going on. Oh, wow. Upstairs, you know. So, yep. um, you know, out of respect for the, the congregation, the children, you know, which should not have been exposed to that. Yeah. You know, we wound up going to Saturdays and then it wasn't working. Saturdays weren't any good. Then we had to go. We went to another church and the people around were complaining because <laughs> what they were hearing. Uh, it was a storefront. It was in Stanford, uh, Stanford, Connecticut. Okay. And uh, we had some very violent ones. And, and it was a, actually, it was a strip row of stores yeah. with the church right in the middle. It was a traditional Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people were hearing it, you know, um, next door and out front. So, the pastor said, listen, I can't have this. I can't have this people hearing this stuff coming out. They don't know what we're doing. Bad for yet, business. You know? <laughs> so then we wind, we wound up in uh, Father Kumaswamy. Um, his wife had an office. She was a, uh, a lawyer, an attorney. And she was the attorney for John Paul II here in the United States. And we used her office. Um 
uh, to uh, to do exorcisms on, on a Sunday, you know, when the when no one else was in the building. That's when we were, you know, uh, doing that. So, um, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's those crazy. poor little kids. That <laughs> that was that wasn't good, you know. I can't even imagine that. We had a <coughs> we had an incident where hmm. I went to Baptist school when I was a kid. I think I was in fourth or fifth grade, but some guy that, you know, he busted in our, in our lunch and like, I, I think he was possessed and he's cussing, he's screaming, he wants to see the pastor and he's, you know, F this F, you know, he's just going crazy. And I, I mean, that scared the crap out of us. So I can only imagine what, you know, little preschoolers down there hearing an exorcism above their head, you know, what was going on through their, through their, their little brains. Joe, you got any questions? Well, yeah, Ralph, um, you, I, I, had a couple, I had a couple of That's questions. Fine. That's okay. I got five of them somewhere. Um, well, when when did you find that this was, when did you realize, I should say, when this was a true vocation for you? Like this was a calling. I'm sure you, you didn't just wake up one day and say, this is what I need to do. Or Well, there, you know, there, was, a point, there was a point where I was not interested in getting involved in this work. I, it was probably about 21 years old. I had just be, just became a police officer, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I was reading again one of the one of the books the Warrens wrote about uh, you know their case I believe is a West Piston Pennsylvania case, and I'm like that that just that just uh, it frightened me you know I'm like shit I don't what, what's wrong with these people are they crazy why would they actually physically go out and get involved in this you know, mm -hmm. and it was a, a lot of years later that um, you know I decided that it was time. And I, and, and I just, it happened to be the, uh, you know, the, the finding that book hostage to, you know, um, not hostage to the devil, uh, Satan's harvest about the Maurice stereo case, yep, yep. you know, um, who I wind up assisting at his exorcism years later, you know? So, um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm reading all of these books and then later on in years, I'm dealing with the actual, case that i was read about you know so it was it was good because i had a real good background knowledge of the case so i i i can see i could learn quickly because there was no putting things together it was already put together so now i'm, I'm ready to take it a little bit further you know and 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 it was it, it was good and i it was a good time to to be involved in the work you know today it's not a good time there's just too many right there's too many knuckleheads and phonies out there that you know you, you people are aligning themselves with people that are going to get them hurt you know mm -hmm. um and it's not good yeah that that bothers well it bothers me personally because today it almost seems like unless you've been on television or you you've uh, uh had a tv show uh you don't know what you're doing and it's it's the other way around. It's the people like mean, us that know what we're doing. Mean right. It's like we don't we don't want that I don't want that exposure. I want people to know who we are if they really need help, but it's very frustrating. That leads me to the second part of my question is I remember I don't think you may not remember this, but this is way back in mid, early nineties, I think, maybe mid nineties. I had a case in New York and I sent you a note. I remember I called you. And you, and you said, sorry, Joe, I'm not in the work anymore. What what happened in that point in your life? Can you talk about it? Were you yeah, got out divorced. of the work for a while? I, that... I wound up getting divorced. That wasn't in the 90s. I forget when it was. It was a while ago, though. Yeah, that wasn't that. in the 90s because the whole, all of 90, I was involved in the work. I got divorced. Okay, so it might have been the early 2000s? I got, I got divorced in 2006. And... Um, you know, I just felt that I was done with the work because, you know, I got divorced and I, I was wrong in my theology because I didn't know any better. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in 2007, I went to Iraq for a year, for 13 months. And I came back and, you know, I, I was actually. Uh, Thank uh, you for your leading, service, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a private contractor. I was well, training Iraqi well, policemen. Oh, cool. Um you know, and, and it was a good experience going over there. Um, but, it, you know, it was to train policemen. It wasn't there to investigate cases. You know, I, yeah, I, right. I was doing something else. And 
um, the paranormal was the furthest thing from my mind, you know, while I was in Iraq. Uh, we just want trying to stay alive there. And that's, that's what was more important. But, um, you know, I came back and, uh, I, I was riding with a motorcycle club for a few years and, uh, leading a pretty wild life, you know, um, a lot of riding, a lot of drinking, uh, hanging out with, uh, 1% of bikers and, you know, uh, bike bars in general. And then, uh, you know, something called me and says, it's time to get back to where you need to be. Uh, the message was clear, you know. I started to have a very, very averse feeling about being in the motorcycle club. I, it got to the point where I didn't like being around the clubhouse anymore, you know. Um, yeah. And I, uh, a little incident happened. It was really nothing big, but I uh, turned in my cut and I said, that's it. I'm done, you know. And I left and I started to get uh, back into my faith, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't claim to be a saint. I'm, I'm the opposite of a saint. It, it, you know, it, it's a wonder that I've been able to uh, get involved in the cases that I've been involved in and still exist as yeah. a human being, you know, um, that the devil wasn't, um, permitted to squash me like a grape, which is what mm -hmm. I deserve, you know. Um, so I had some really great mentors, Father Martin and Bishop McKenna. I couldn't ask for anything more in that department, you know, in that respect. Yeah. They, uh, um, it, it, it makes sense that you had to take a break because, like I said, after reading your book, you, you were involved in some pretty nasty crap all the time. Like that's got to take its toll on you. And so, you know, you certainly deserve the break, <laughs> but like you said, you're, you know, if this is what you're meant to do, you're always going to be called back to it. And, uh, you know, I, I truly believe that I have a, I have a story myself as well of not the exact same thing, but going away from the faith and then coming back to it. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. I, I went through some crap and there was clear signs sent to me that I need to, to get back into church and get back to, you know, get right with God again, instead of yeah. living how I was living. So, so I totally understand that. Um, Joe, do you have, you said you had five questions, Joe. Well, what no, you, I had what a few playing right with over there. Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm writing questions down here. Oh man. It's, Something been, sounds... it's been a while since Ralph and I have seen each other. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 so hearing that, to... I'm hearing that click and I'm trying to, yeah, it's Morse code that somebody, you know, making me crazy. Oh, that's that's not me. Up. I just have my pen here. I'm writing stuff down here. Oh, okay. But no, I, I, I just remember um, remember years ago when uh, it was probably a few years before Ed would even let me go on a case uh, on my own. I, I mean, I worked directly with them, but uh, I remember Jeff, and you could chime in on your part of the story. You know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> But I was I was physically attacked at a, yeah. at a case in in Shelton, Connecticut, back in I want to say it was late eighties, late eighties. It was a few years I, I came on scene. I met the Warrens in eighty six. I was only eighteen, and uh, it was a few years I remember before I was allowed to go on a case. And I remember Ed Ed said to me, he "Goes I want you and so and so. I won't mention any names uh, to go out uh, to this house." And we went out there and. Nothing seemed to be going on at the time, but then all oh, hell broke loose, and I was actually lifted and thrown across the wall, uh, uh, thrown across the room and hit the wall. And I remember I was telling Jeff this for the first first time. And what did you say, Jeff? <laughs> well, yeah, I I had oh, always tell Ralph people, what you said. Yeah, so I I had always been er, said quite a few times that I've always wanted to be scratched or pushed or thrown just to just so I know everybody else that makes that claim isn't making it up. And so, you know, me, me being the badass that I was having Joe Frankie on the show, I, I told him that and he's like, no, you don't, no, you don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I and think I said, what are you freaking crazy? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody wants that. I mean, yep. I remember Ed once said to me, he says, Joe, he goes, you take a stick and you poke a tiger one or too many times, it's going to take a swat at you, <laughs> you know, and it did. And you know, all, all, like you, you were saying earlier off about poltergeist activity, I mean, if you want to call it that, but I mean, 
things started flying around. I remember a two liter bottle of soda came around the corner from the kitchen and it clipped my nose to the point where I got a nosebleed, but it almost hit me and it smashed it in the head. And I was, people would say, well, weren't you scared? And I'm going to go, yeah, I'm human. I'm just a mortal human being. You know, I'm not Superman. As of course I was scared. It's a natural human emotion. When your brain is trying to wrap itself around what just happened to you. Uh, I said, but I think when I got up, I was more pissed off than, than scared at that point. And we got, we got out of there. We had to regroup. And, you know, I think that that house, uh, I think Bishop McKenna actually ended up doing an exorcism there. Um, but I was terrified, you know, uh, now, I mean, I have obviously some health problems of my own. Am I attributing them to this work? Not really, because you can never prove it. You know, I know Ed had his first heart attack during the Maurice stereo case. Um, you know, could that be, you know, related to the devil or Satan or whatever? I mean, yeah, it could be. Um, it all depends on, on what you believe, I guess. Well, God, but, if it is, if it is, God allowed it to happen. So that's right. right that that's right. Satan can only do it. what God yeah. will allow. Right. And you, you don't well, get I've involved in this that. field without being affected by it. You know, it's it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And the people but, around you are going to get affected by it. Yeah, we and talked it's a little bit. The first thing that goes is a marriage. Yeah, that's we true. talked about people that a little bit. Their marriage. We talked about that a little bit before we actually got on air, but that's. That's something too that's in your book is how can you describe a little bit how this how doing the work really affected your family because there's you've got lots of stories of everybody in your family getting you know attacked. Well, they, it, they've all experienced something you know usually when I wasn't home. Right. Usually, not all the time when I was on yeah. a case. So, but I was always suspect about when I'd come home to hear that something happened because they knew where I was. So it might have played psychologically on them, but there were some things that I could just not dismiss as, a, you know, all right, you know, you heard a noise, you saw yeah. a shadow, all right, you yeah. know, you can, but when a, a frame comes off the wall or a door is banging and the lights are dimming and, you know, uh, there's something going on, you hear yeah. somebody, you hear somebody uh, coming up those steps you know, you can hear, you know, we know what footsteps sound like. And yeah. you know that there isn't anybody down there, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it messed with my, uh, with my family's uh, heads. Remember, they were three, they were girls. All, yeah. all three yeah. of them were girls, you know. My daughters didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, you know, when you got little kids, they might be in another room playing, but they got one ear. Yeah. trained on what you're saying and one eye on what you're what you're mm -hmm. doing so they you know i'm on the phone talking to people about the case and my daughter's over here playing coloring or you know doing something yeah. she's hearing this stuff you know mm -hmm. so there was no getting around the fact that the devil is is real and mm -hmm. there are demons and they're real too you know mm -hmm. um and the boogeyman is real you know so that's something i had to deal with but you know i got two tough daughters now yeah you know what i mean um mm -hmm. if something happens of course they're going to get frightened by it yep. but they're not going to sit by and say well what the hell was that they're going to call me up and say dad it doesn't happen you know it doesn't happen yeah. but um you know over the years there are a few little instances that took place and you know i'm like hey all right you know just yeah. pray don't worry about it yep have you have you taught them how mm -hmm. to deal with it like i mean it told them hey that's that you get the holy water out let's not mess around and oh yeah they you know, yeah, take care they, okay they know yeah they know how to use the holy water uh they were using it when when i was away or uh, there was a problem because yeah. i worked steady midnights at that time yeah so they were home alone and you know things predominantly happen at night yeah so you know the holy water was always by the beds you know mm -hmm. the nightstands they were in the living room they got the bottle and they started using the holy water you yep. know um and that's what they do four corners four corners of the room mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know um and that's what they would do 
there was nothing else that I could do. I had to prepare them. You know, yeah. um, they have my bloodline. The devil knows who they are. Yep. You know, um, when I leave this world, he's not going to be able to get me anymore. Yeah. Who's left? Mm-hmm. My bloodline. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I got four grandsons. You know, okay. God bless you. And yeah, I didn't know that. Be, the oldest one, who's eleven, is starting to understand certain things. He knows mm-hmm. about the movie, mm-hmm. and you yeah. know, he knows about the book. He's mm-hmm. been haunting my uh, daughter to see the movie, but she's too young yet. You know, eleven <laughs> is not old enough. Yeah, but, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's not for that movie. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that. Um, that Christina was watching TV and Eric Banner came on the screen and my grandson said, is that grandpa? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how the hell he made that connection. Like yeah. That. You know, um, they didn't see any movie. Yeah. You know, um, he didn't see this movie. So he, there's no way he could have known that, but it was just weird. You know, um, you had a, you had another really funny story in your book i mean it's it's not funny but um your parents it sounded like against their better judgment allowed you to see the exorcist at an early age (laughs) how how old were you when they took you to see that i was 12 years old okay (laughs) i was the same age as the Mm. actress reagan i believe okay well the same age of the character he was 12 years old when this happened you know and i remember that movie theater it's not there anymore but I I have snapshots of that night that'll never never leave me, you know. Yeah, yep. I was it's... on that line, and I'm looking, and I'm the only kid on that line, <laughs> and I shit myself at that point. You know, I started to realize that maybe I bit off a little bit more than than I could chew here, you know? Uh, I didn't close my eyes, though. I didn't do none of this yeah. shit. I watched the movie. Yeah. I did not like... The real scene that bothered me the most was um, when the eyes rolled back in in the head, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That bothered the shit out of me. Uh, yeah. excuse, excuse my language, but... Um, and then I actually seen it in real life, and it, it didn't affect me anymore, yeah. you know? It yeah. just... It didn't bother me. Yeah. Um, I no longer had the same fear that I had when I first began. You yeah. know, it was simply because of a lack of faith. That's all it was, knowledge of my yeah. faith. Yeah. You know, once once I started to really delve into my faith and I went to the traditional Catholic church and, you know, I started to uh, on, uh, speak to Father Martin and Bishop McKenna and ask some questions and I started to learn. And then, you know, started, I, I just... I took everything that had to do with the devil and put it on the side. I actually threw all my occult books in the garbage. I didn't want them anymore. Yeah. I kept a few mm-hmm. that I might need to use as reference, but yep. mm-hmm. every, all that other crap whoop, in the garbage. I didn't mm-hmm. want it. And I just started to uh, get into my faith, you know, yeah. really, really uh, go as deep as I could. And um, that's when my fear went away. Because I realized that Mm -hmm. no matter what goes on, no matter what happens, no matter what befalls me or befalls the human race, Mm -hmm. I belong to God because I try to remain in a state of grace. When I commit a mortal sin, I confess it as soon as possible. I get back into the state of grace and I try to walk the path of grace in my life. And if I'm doing that, then what do I have to fear? Absolutely yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. Because, exactly. you know, it says in scripture, don't fear, don't fear what can kill your body. Fear what can kill your soul. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so if, if I wrap my soul in God's protection because I, I lead my life, uh, you know, in a certain manner where I honestly try very hard not to commit mortal sin mm-hmm. i try not to commit any venial sin but that's like impossible i i commit about 100 of them a day you know um, <laughs> i think I did all i gotta do is go on, came on the air all yeah. i gotta do is go on twitter for about a half an hour and there's half of them right there because you know I'm, uh, you know i i, I talk to people right. because 
I have a First Amendment right on Twitter. You know, yeah. I've never been banned on Twitter. Yeah. So I tested the waters, dipped my toe, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> okay. And bam, I'd let him have it. And it's, <laughs> you know, I it might not be very Christian-like, but <laughs> we're in times where, you know, eventually they're going to be coming for me because I'm a Christian. Yeah. So you want me to play nice with uh, you and say nice yeah. things. In the yep. meantime, you're going to come to try and snuff out my life later on. I know yeah. the plan. So, mm -hmm. you know, all bets are off. I'm not playing with kick gloves. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, well, and, and nobody does on Twitter anyway. So, I mean, whatever you give, uh, I'm fine with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, Twitter is a Twitter is the armpit uh, of social media, I think. Uh, it is. There's so much nasty people in there. It's. It's not. Yeah, but you know what? It's okay because they expose themselves for who they are. Yeah. Yeah. The ones yeah. that actually put their real name up, because as far as yeah. I'm concerned, there, yeah. there are more trolls on there that are hiding behind yeah. some kind of a pseudonym mm -hmm. than people who are actually saying, "Okay, this is my name, and this is what I stand for," right. and I don't care if you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So I put my name. Traditional Catholic is in my bio in mm -hmm. big block letters. Traditional Catholic. That's yeah. what I am. And I had it in small letters until the FBI started to uh, <laughs> look at the traditional Catholic. So I'm like, oh, yeah. you're going to play that game? And mm -hmm. I knew it was going to happen. Yep. And it, it's not stopping. Don't let's believe what they're saying. Oh, we don't do that. No, oh, yeah, no, no. Bullshit. They're yeah. still doing it. They're yep. still involved in it. It's yep. a must. It has to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, I well, for traditional Catholic to the big block letters because I want them to know it. Yeah. I'm not hiding. It's, yep. It's refreshing to, to hear you talk because, you know, one thing I talk about um, to to our to our group and, and, and when I lecture, I talk about faith. Not a lot of people talk about that anymore. And I, I tell people, because people are like, well, I have this problem in my house. Should I go out and buy some, some crucifixes or Bible or, you know, uh, some holy water. And I said, well, it's not going to help you unless you have faith in what that stands for, what that represents. I said, it's your faith that's your weapon. I said, it's it's not this piece of metal. I said, it's just a piece of metal around your neck unless you believe in this and what it stands for. And and the throwing holy water around the house, is it's not going to work in you to so believe in it because it's you know, going to hurt you, actually. If well, you're not yeah, I, you know, using it in that manner. It, I'm I'm a traditional Catholic myself. I was born and raised, you know, Roman Catholic. You know, the Warrens were my mentors. They're very Roman Catholic, you know, and I make no apologies for that. But when I talk to people, because there's a lot of haters out there, as you well know, and I say, I said, listen, I said, I'm going to talk to you from my traditional roots. I said, if you don't believe in this or you don't uh, agree with what I'm saying, I respect that. I said, you know, but re you know, respect me as well. You know, uh, there's an old line from the movie Miracle on 34th Street that I usually uh, uh, say, and it's faith is believing in those things that common sense tells you not to. You know, it's like, well, do you believe in air? Yeah. Well, we're breathing. It keeps us alive. But can you see it? It's it's not tangible, you know, and, you know, you know, it's funny. And I, and I don't name names or name these TV shows, but I watch them and I just look and I said, if you were ever faced with a case like we've had in our past, you'd shit yourself. You wouldn't know what to do. You know, it's all for show. And you read the credits at the end of the show, and it says for entertainment purposes. Well, okay, some of them are pretty well done, and they're entertaining. But they don't actu accurately depict, you know, what goes on in a true investigation. You don't need all these toys. One of my favorites is the cat balls. I make a lot of fun about the, the cat balls. Oh, the cat balls are going off. That means there's a demon in front of me. Yeah. I don't, and, and I don't like, know if, if there was a demon a in front balls. of you, it wouldn't need the cat balls to let you know it was there, you know? But it's just refreshing to, to hear Ralph from the old school, you know, and <laughs> because, you know, I I say the same things, but people are probably tired of listening to me. I know yeah, but you know what? Ralph the from the old school, <laughs> when I did the demon files, the three cases, I was, I was using... Um, those paranormal investigating uh, tools that they had. And I I got two investigators that mm -hmm. worked those things because I didn't know how to use that. I never used them. 
But I realized that if I'm going to have this show, I can't just go there, do an interview and do a pray, uh, you know, or, or pray, yeah. do an exorcism. I, I need to have an investigation. I never did mm. investigations mm. like that. I wasn't interested. When I was with the Warrens, yeah, that's the way they ran their cases. On my mm. own, there was an interview. And there was either an exorcism or there wasn't. There mm -hmm. was no, uh, you know, walking around the house. There was definitely no religious provocation. I did mm -hmm. that because of the demon files. Mm -hmm. I never done that before. Mm -hmm. um, I did maybe in the in the total time that I was involved in the work three times, mm -hmm. and two of them were at Ed Warren's behest. He said, "Ralph, we'll do religious provocation." You know, and I, it was all about I religious provocation. Mm -hmm. So you know, but. Uh, on my own case, my you know the way I worked yeah. them, I never did that. But for the demon files, I, I had to. I needed to provide some form something of evidence, tangible, yeah, something for people could the, see. You know, for the viewership, they had to see something. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, um, and these these scientific tools were some of the way that I was able to measure. The spirit world, or else, mm -hmm. how else can I do it? How can mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. convey what's going on? I could say, you know, it's cold in here, but the people that, that are watching, they're not going to feel how cold yeah. it was. You know, and you know, uh, you investigated when, when you're in the presence of a demonic spirit, it gets friggin' cold yeah. in their presence. They're taking yeah. that energy right out of the room, you know, um, right out of you. They're like a void. They're like a yeah. void, you know, mm -hmm. that that steps into our plane of existence, sucks everything up. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. I, 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 I just, some of these tools, though, they're bordering on the ridiculous. I mean, yeah, you know, like e, EMF meters, Gauss meters. Uh, yeah, I've used them. I've got one, you know, but the way they portray it is, OK, I got a spike here. That means there's a ghost in front of me. I said, always look for a natural explanation. Yep. You know, yeah. check check the power. I tell people if you're gonna do if you're gonna do like baseline readings, ask ask the person who owns the property, the home, or the business, can you can you shut the main power off? Turn all the power off. You know, and let's see if we get anything <laughs> there. You know, but yeah, you know, the TV per, and, and in the movies they they show these tools and and, and some of them are. Um, maybe interesting and, and yield some good results, but they're not proven though. You know, but when you get you play the flashlight game and the cat balls and all that stuff, I personally don't believe in those things. Um I some of the tools they do. But even like, you know, that. voice box sessions. I said if there's something intelligent there that wants to communicate, it'll be able to communicate. We won't need this toy to do that. Yeah, but you know what? It makes it easier and I have gotten or heard some very, very serious class A uh, EVPs. Yeah, I, I was in. Yeah. I, I I don't know if you saw um, the uh, Amityville resurgence video that my investigator Sean Austin uh, had produced. We had actually gone to um, the Amityville house, Sean and I, and sat uh, uh, two or three mm -hmm. houses down. And we got some pretty amazing EVPs in, that. You know, um, I suggest that you go listen to them because. Where can I hear them, Ralph? Um, I believe Scan Network is where you can find that. Right that um, Scan Network, I believe, is a free. It's free now. You don't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. It's called Amityville um, Resurgence. And. Um, those EVPs that we got were absolutely dynamite. You know that little boy John that's in that house. Yes. Yeah. I believe that we uh, we uh, we got in contact with that kid, mm. and um, he was asking for prayers. Yeah. We got all of this on on uh, you know on tape, mm -hmm. um, and and more than we bargained for. So, you know what? I have to tell you something. It wasn't only voices we got. Mm -hmm. um, there were noises. Um, I had asked at one point, what about this gunshot? The Senfield rifle is very loud. Yeah. Um, I did some work with Mike Church, and he had actually gone to a gun range mm -hmm. and audio taped the report of that weapon inside and outside. So while it was inside, he was outside, and we couldn't understand how 
um, six people were shot with that rifle and nobody in the neighborhood heard that. Yeah. Nobody heard a sound. There's it's so impossible. many questions about that that I it's have. It's impossible. It's really yep. How did all of these people die in their bed, yep. lying face down? No it's one got impossible. up and ran. It's weird. Right. So I I questioned this, the gunshot. I said, what about this gunshot? Mm -hmm. And uh, two seconds later, boom, came through that box. Oh, wow. Now that that's not something you know that that's running through the sounds of voices, mm -hmm. different radio frequencies. Yeah. Right, right. How is it? It would have been a mighty. I would like to know the mathematical probabilities of that happening if it was just a natural phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. That I asked that question, and about three or four seconds later, boom comes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I, the question was asked. That picture. You, you're familiar with the picture of. The little the boy. boy in the Amityville house, yeah. correct? Yep. With the, yeah. The, yeah. The grimace and all that. Yep. Yep. Sean Austin says, John, that picture of that little boy, you know, who, who was that? And I said, John, was that you? A few seconds later, that isn't me. In the same voice that we've mm. heard the whole night, yeah. that we were addressing as John. So it's the same as voice, and how many frequencies did it go through? Yep. What's it, that? You're, you're talking about a ghost box, so it, go, it yeah. sweeps through the frequencies yeah. like in a tenth of a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, no, those I've used because I've got full sentences that would be yeah. maybe watch, a one point one second. Tape, man. I'm going to. I, mean, I didn't even know about it. Thank you. I, when, I, when did you I, guys do it, that, Ralph? What year was that? He's got that kind of evidence in the Amityville house to tell you the truth. Was yeah, it from I, the I house? Or you said you're a couple houses down. Was it from the yeah, house? We were, you were, we were right there. Yeah. Right. Right. We were right. We were in front of that house. We were, of course. Well, now I'm, I'm going to do that tonight. Actually, <laughs> I'm dying to hear it because, you know that that is amazing to me when you've got it set up for to sweep through a different freak radio frequency at a tenth of a second. So you go through ten frequencies in a second, and I personally have audios from cases that last longer than a second, and it is unquestionably the same voice. I always I like to use. It. Yeah, I always like to use the AM band and scan backwards as fast as it goes. That way, if something legible comes through, it's like impossible. You know, if well, you, you know, I, I think at that particular point, it was uh, maybe, uh, uh, man, how many years ago? Four or five years ago, maybe something like that. Um, you know, he was always up to date on the latest technology when it came to that because he friended the people that actually make these mm -hmm. these tools okay. you know um and this this was like one of the newest ones at the time it was he actually had it hooked up to the speakers in his car so we weren't missing it the only thing i didn't like is that they were you know like little mm -hmm. kids laughing like in the like in the demon files uh yeah in deliver us from evil yeah saying, and I, i'm like sean what is that shit? What, what, what is this laughing crap? You know, mm. uh, he goes, I don't, I don't know. We later found out that it was just, it was imprinted into ambiance atmosphere. I found mm. it to be a distraction. I rather not hear anything until I actually hear something come through. I don't need these little, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they throw me nuts. I'm like, Sean, shut it off. <laughs> I'd be crazy here. Are these things spirits or we, you know, yeah. or is this on a loop? Yeah. You know? um, he's, he's psychic, right? He's a, he's a psychic. Yeah. Sean, yeah. That's Sean, right. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, gosh, I had like a billion questions to ask you and I can't, what's well, um, nine o'clock. So, uh, yeah. you know, um, well, what are you yeah, working on now, Ralph? Anything? Yeah, You're working on anything good. now or are you just teaching, consulting? Yeah. Just teaching, consulting, you know, um, I'm retired. Pretty much, you know. Yeah, you're not um, in New York anymore. I noticed that. No, no, I, I'm living <laughs> in Florida, and uh, you know, um, I, I don't, you know, I'll never not do what God wants me to do when I feel it. You know, mm -hmm. when I feel that it's time, and it's not even something that I can put my finger on. It's it, it's just that I know I have to do this, mm -hmm. and that's it. You know. Um, there are there were some projects that I wasn't going to do, and and I got the message no uh, that I got to do them, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I would switch up and I'd say yeah okay, because right. mo most of the time when people ask me for for interviews, especially film and stuff, I don't want to mm -hmm. go through that crap, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I tell them no. I I rather not. I don't want to. You know. Yeah. I, and and sometimes something leads me that no no you got to do that. Gotcha. So where where can people find your classes? Because you do you do online well, classes. Well, I I I use Zoom as my okay. uh, you know my platform, mm -hmm. and the best way to find out when the classes are is. Uh, on my Facebook page. Okay. You know, um, and right now uh, I'm doing the next, I'm not doing a, a formal class. I'm doing something with Rob Morrow on father Martin because of this book uh, yeah. that he's going to write. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a zoom class and this, this is by donation. You donate to the, to the, uh, father Martin fund. And, okay. uh, you know, we put you in the zoom class and, you got me and Rob for an hour or two and, and Rob will, uh, you know, go over some of the stories that he's going to put in the book, uh, you know, and answer some questions. And, mm -hmm. and later on down the road, I have like four hours of video of father Martin that I never released to the public. Oh, okay. And I'm going to use the zoom oh, to, uh, you know, to introduce that some, some of the footage was used in, in the, uh, docudrama hostage to the devil. Uh, mm -hmm. Which was a, a docudrama made about Father Malachi Martin. Yeah, if you haven't good. seen it, I know I haven't yeah. seen that either. I mean, I've seen it. it's good. Um, in fact, the exorcism at the end that uh, that we had some video of uh, was, in fact, Father Martin's uh, case when this girl was four years old, and he had told me about this case, you know, um, years earlier, and he had passed away, and uh, you know. Uh, Bishop McKenna said, Ralph, we have an exorcism. Um, you know, it was in Sanford in that little church that I was talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And um, he's like, it's eight year old little girl. And I put two and two together. I said, is that the girl that Father Martin? He goes, yeah. So she was eight at the time. Okay. And I had, I, you know, put some footage. I gave some footage to Marty Stalker to, for him to use for this, for this docudrama and, some of the footage that I, my own personal footage, I, I, I he used some of that, but I have many hours and I, I'm going mm -hmm. to offer stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I offer a wide array of classes. It's a curriculum that I develop myself. So it's, mm -hmm. it's mine, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's the way I teach. And the thing is, is that it's, it's from a traditional Catholic point of view. I can't, teach you about the devil and his demons without teaching you about the Catholic church. You can't separate them. They're mm -hmm. intertwined. People mm -hmm. don't understand this, you know? So if you want to hear ghost stories, well, you know, you can go to one of the many people out there that will be more than happy to tell you ghost stories and tell mm -hmm. you how great they are, you know, when they investigate a case or when they battle demons, you know, mm -hmm. with the swords and the shields and the fiery darts. And, you know, um, you're not going to hear that from me. You're going to hear who the devil is and who he's not, you know, yeah. um, and how his demons operate. All this other crap is waste of time. Mm -hmm. Ghost stories. Tell me a ghost story. What for? <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I do like to hear a good ghost story, but I also That's what people want to hear your aspect of it. That this is what you do. This is how the you ghost? approach it. And I, and I like, I 100%, I was, I was raised the way that you think, you know what I'm saying? It's that yeah. like, I understand the, the God and the devil and angels and demons. And, you know, I have a very, very good understanding of that. So I know exactly what you're talking about, that that is, you, you can't, like you said, you can't teach one without teaching the other. It's there's yeah. with, there's you know there's there's no God story without the devil and there's oh. no devil story without God. I mean, it's you have to you have to teach it. <laughs> All right, Ralph. Well, I have a quick question conjunction. though. I, do, have you ever had a conversation with with Catholic priests that actually didn't believe in in the devil or you know or in demonic infestation? Because I have, I. I you know, I mean, obviously, priests are people first, but I, I've i actually had a couple of priests throughout my life that said, oh, well, that, that doesn't happen. OK, but uh, I, I never really had that. I, I had some nasty priests, uh, you know, Novus Auto guys. Um, 
uh, that, that didn't behave like priests, you know, yeah. um, and, and, uh, it took every ounce of my strength to not treat them like they're not priests. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I've always had, I, I had, I had a priest one day, uh, it was actually, we were in the middle, uh, we were taking a break from an exorcism and there happened to be a diner right next door to uh, the, the church that we were at. And we went to get something to eat. And actually, the exorcism was over. We were done because mm -hmm. we were eating, you know. Um, and uh, the priest said to me, you know, maybe you shouldn't be involved in the work you're doing. I said, Father, that's great. I really appreciate that. I said, so I can give your phone number to whoever calls me. And in mm -hmm. fact, I have a list of people that I'm uh, dealing with right now. Can I send you the list and you can take it over and you can handle it for me? Mm -hmm. And I got a hum, 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 hum. Yeah, right, like, right. Yeah, you know, I, I thought so. The reason why I'm doing this is not because I want to do it. It's because I have to do it. You were called There are to priests do. that aren't getting involved. I wrote so many. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there was a lot of priests that, uh, you know, they didn't want to have anything to do with me, you know, um, because I called them out. Mm -hmm. I called them cowards. That's the way I feel about it. You're a priest. Mm -hmm. I, I have a spiritual problem. I talked to a, job. I talked to a <laughs> Lutheran priest not too long ago about, um, I wanted to, I wanted to find out just information about exorcisms and things like that. And it was, it was a guy that I knew and he was like, I've never even been asked that before. I'm thinking in 30 years, you've never ever been asked about an exorcism or had any kind of, you know, this is an inner city ministry in Toledo. And like, you've never had that come up. And he's like, nope, I've never had anything like that come up before. I'm like, oh my goodness. How have you, how have you been a priest in a, in a downtown church and not ever had to deal with it? I just, that, that was baffling to well, me. You know what? Maybe it's because the way, mm. what I find is 95% of my cases were either Protestant or no religion at all. Mm -hmm. A very, very small number of my cases are Catholic. Yeah. And they're the easiest to handle because all I do is send them to the church, yeah. go to confession, go to communion, get properly blessed holy water, and go home and read the Pope Leader 13th prayer. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're in a state of grace and you've fasted for the day. And follow the prayers in the back of my book yep. and just do what needs to be done. And you know what? They've had great success doing it because mm -hmm. the sacraments are open to them. Yeah, You can't use the sacraments of the Catholic Church unless you're a baptized Catholic. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not going to. Well, I can't say it's not going to work for you because, you know, God shows his mercy to everybody. Mm -hmm. And he shows his mercy to to the pagan as well as he does to the saint, you know, you have to seek it though. And that, that's, that's the whole thing. So if somebody that doesn't have any faith is having this problem, they're going to seek his help because they don't know where else to go. They're not yeah. going to go to the plumber. They're not yeah. going to go to the electrician. Yep. And they're certainly not going to call the road to man and have him come in and take care of the problem in their house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No matter how good those road and root men think they are, <laughs> so and, know, and, um, and and they're going to charge you a boatload too. You got to be a member of the family in mm -hmm. order to use the tools of the family. You know what I mean? I have so, had. I'll, I'll never go against the family. Yeah, I'll say this though. I have not we this have family. Had a lot of, we've had a <laughs> lot of clients that are Catholic that say that that the church has turned their back to them when they have these yeah. problems and that's that that's that, that's changing, that baffles though. me is it that, that's good that is Glad to hear that. okay when i first started there was no exorcist in the archdiocese of new york there mm. was one that i knew of yeah he was out in poughkeepsie and he wasn't even official started as an official exorcist he was a psychiatrist by trade he was working with uh, he was working with deprogramming people coming out of the cults mm. and he was finding out that a lot of them were possessed. So he started to, to work on exorcisms and he became friends with the Warrens and yeah. through the Warrens. I began work. I handled some cases for him and, you know, and like it, but he was the only one, there was no one else today. 
you can call the local ordinary and say, I need the exorcist, and they might know who you need. And yeah. they'll take your information and they'll have them call you. Mm -hmm. And it's simple. If the priest in your diocese, there's, there's no exorcist covering, you go to the neighboring diocese and maybe you'll find them there. You'll yeah. get one. Yeah. But, you know, he might be out of state, yeah. but if your case is serious enough, yeah, you'll either go to him or he'll come to you. As I understand, every di every diocese has an exorcist. I don't know if that's true. That, but that's what I, I mean. I've heard it would that. Be nice. I've heard that, but you know, at, at the behest of the archbishop, <coughs> you know, but you know, I, I remember what Ed and Lorraine taught me, and they were right. Was they said you have to come to the church with like overwhelming evidence before they'll get involved, and mm -hmm. that's right. You know, it is. But you know, as well, Jeff was saying, there are. There are churches we've had clients that have gone to the yeah. church and had they basically had the door slammed in the face. Devout Catholics too, and they've it gone happens. to the church and it's like, no, nope, we can't do it. And that, it that's happens. a sin. That's you a know sin. what? You you gentlemen are not familiar with the um, the apparition of Our Lady of La Salette, France, September of hmm. eighteen forty six. I suggest that you look into Our Lady of La Salette mm -hmm. in eighteen forty six. And find out what her message is, because you might be real surprised about it. Um, I try to deal with the mainstream Catholic Church as little as possible. I am a traditional Catholic. Anything mm -hmm. that I need, I get from the traditional Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I didn't have that problem with Bishop McKenna. Bishop McKenna um, knew that. Uh, you know, if I said to him, I have a case of demonic possession, it was a case of demonic possession. Yeah. You know, Bishop McKenna would always speak to the people to get a feel for them. Mm -hmm. And we'd set it up. Yeah. And it was done. So I, I didn't have to jump through hoops. But the thing is that the exorcism in the in, in the movie Hostage to the Devil, what we were doing there is we were getting um, proof for the mainstream Catholic church in the diocese that she lived in because she was not from the area of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. she, they were trying to get a priest down in her diocese and the bishop wanted proof. It was a traditional Catholic bishop because it was a traditional Catholic priest that eventually freed this child. I know who the priest is. Yeah. Um, so the proof that we got was for him and we got it. I mean, it's on the film. This, this, mm -hmm. this little eight year old, uh, prayed the Magnificat in Latin. Now that's one of the signs of possession is yeah. speaking a language you don't know. Right. Now I could produce a, a, an eight year old kid that could speak fluent Latin. They're trained from first grade though. Yeah, this little this little girl was in the Nova Soto. They didn't speak Latin. The, the, the mass was in the vernacular. The mass is, wasn't in Latin in okay. the church that she went to. Uh -huh. The mass is in Latin in the traditional church, which she eventually became a part of. But she didn't know the Latin back then, you mm. know, um, and it was the proof that the bishop needed to give the OK for this priest, this exorcist to go ahead and do the exorcism. And she was eventually freed. Yeah. So, you know, it wasn't clear at the end of the movie because that wasn't known at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't uh -huh. only till after I was told that she committed suicide that I started. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I made some phone calls and I found out the truth and she didn't commit suicide. Oh. She was actually free. Yeah. So, you know. I'm going to have to look that up because I've, uh -huh. I've never heard of that. And I, that definitely sounds like something I'd. Yeah, well, you're not, you're not going to find that anywhere. Except for in Hostage to the Devil, because yeah, that's what I'm saying. That you know that 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 wasn't written up anywhere. Yep, yep. Um, Do you have the book, Jeff? No, I don't. That's dude. Uh, this this show this season has got well, no, it wasn't, in the, it wasn't in the book. Hostage. Oh, wasn't in the book. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Docudrama. Docudrama. It yeah. was in the film. Gotcha. Yeah, Which it's based on that. you know it was based on Father Martin. It wasn't based it wasn't on the, the book, on the book itself. Yeah. But this this next book coming out about Father Martin has an awful lot of promise because I I know some of the 
situations in this book and they're absolutely incredible. Yep. Absolutely incredible. Some of these things were told to me directly from Father Martin. Some of these things, you know, mm-hmm. Rob is filling in a lot of puzzle pieces for me, you know. Um, yeah. So it's 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 interesting. It's his project, but I'm just as excited for it as he is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I is there a timeline, it. Ralph? What's that? I'm sorry, is there a timeline when it will be out? Um, not yet. But, oh, yeah, okay. uh, you know, I, I'll be making an posts on that. my Facebook page all yeah, the time right. about it, you know, keeping everybody appraised. Uh, you know, I'm definitely going to be marketing it uh, so as it reaches every as many people's hands as possible. Yeah. You know, so many misconceptions know. about him that are unfair. I'm just thinking, I, I, how many people around today that are still involved in the work or not even remember <laughs> Father Malachi Martin? Probably not many. I met him a few times. I never really worked with him, but I met him through the Warrens. Um, yeah. But uh, I was a lot. I was a kid then, you know. I was yeah. So you teenager. you must have been there for for the time that I brought Father Martin up there. Well, yeah, I remember because I remember meeting you for the first time. I, I guess it was that. 1990, 91, somewhere around there. Because uh, you had started. Be, it had to be a little later than that. I remember because you said earlier you started in '90, right? Yeah. I because I, 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 I remember, but again, that was 33 years ago. It was. I can't remember, was, I can't remember was, what I ate for that. breakfast this morning. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it's got to be at least 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I I wasn't I wasn't introduced in, to I, I forget I'm trying to remember what year it was, but it, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. Let's leave oh, yeah. it at that, I guess. All right. Well, listen, gentlemen. Um, Thank you, Ralph, so much. You know, I, I hate to run, but no, you know, we we were um, going to wrap it up anyway. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep. So, is there is there Thank anything that is there anything that you want to plug before you before you head out? Like you know, where people, well, I, project, I just, projects you're working on or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I, I the only project that I am working on right now is uh, you know helping Rob, but it's his project. I'm helping him. Okay. You know, I, I help Sean Austin with that, whatever he needs, and there are a couple of projects in the works. But being that they had the strike, I think everything mm-hmm. just came to a grinding halt, and there's so much confusion. Yeah, you know, I, I had two different groups of people wanting me to do the same type of show, you know, on yeah. Satanism. At this, I'm like, wow, you, you know, um, who do I go? You know, who am I working with? You know, uh, yeah. So. But that's about it. But I, I just do want to say I want to say this one thing. Beware the night and deliver us from evil are the same book. Yep. Don't buy the both of them. Why <laughs> deliver us from evil? It's the newer book. Don't, don't buy. They don't even print Beware the Night anymore. It's deliver us from evil. Don't that's why I hope I books. find my copy. <laughs> I know it's in this house somewhere. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I I, know I, I don't have any copy. I have one copy and that's it. And I no. sometimes I... I Use it for reference because I don't remember what I wrote in the book sometimes. I'm like, but that was- <laughs> what chapter is Thank that? Thank you so much, Ralph. I'm well, sorry gonna... the, our, com- our, our audience, Jeff, we didn't really get to any questions. Uh, yeah, I, I was. We'll have to have there Ralph wasn't a whole lot of questions, point. but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to start you, carrying Ralph. your book around in, in my um, you know house cleansing kit and stuff like that because it has conveniently has all the, the prayers and, and all that stuff in it. But yes, as Joe yeah. said, thank you again for joining us. Thank this you was. So much. This one me on the guys. went by quick to me, and I'll definitely be following you. And I'm I'm interested in taking some classes. And I appreciate like it. I'll just, be in, I'll uh, be in touch with you offline, Ralph. It's great to okay. reconnect after all these years. Thank all you right, so no much problem. for coming. Thanks for having me on, guys. God bless, my friend. Have Take care. God bless. All right. See y'all later. Thanks.